What is going on, my friends? In this video, I'm going to review a couple of crypto trades I took on a crypto called Ton, which is a crypto that is, I guess, owned or designed by the owners of Telegram. And it's been in play lately. So a couple of trades I took on it. I'm going to explain to you what I call what I've been thinking about calling it the Telegram Ton coin fiasco or frenzy. Um, I also saw that on some other news headlines. So I took some good trades on in the last few days and I wanted to kind of explain to you better the narrative behind these trades and, um, you know, just uh, some of the reasoning behind why I decided to take these trades. So it all started with Telegram coming out with their wallet service. Um, so Telegram has a wallet, a crypto wallet built into it. And it's interesting. So they support USDT. Toncoin, Bitcoin, I'm not sure if they have Ethereum, and now they even have another coin that they came out with called Notcoin, which I haven't touched. Um, but the Toncoin itself is a crypto that I've been watching, I'd say, for at least almost a year at this point now. And it's been interesting. It's a, it's a coin that's in play for trading, I would say. And um, so what happened was Telegram Wallet announced that they were doing an earn event where you deposit like a few thousand USDT and they were giving you a return on that and they would pay you the money in Ton coin. So for me, that started a bit of a narrative. Um, and of course, you know, because I have some assets in crypto and all that, I was like, for me, it was a no brainer. I'll just send over 3000 and let's earn a bit of Ton coin on the side because I typically have a good amount of capital on the sidelines, you know, waiting to be deployed. That's just how I do business lately. And um, so I sent the money over there and then I started earning Toncoin. And then while this was all playing out, Toncoin is trading, you know, pretty high. I mean, as you can see here, we're looking at this daily chart and it traded up to, you know, it rallied up in the last couple of months here all the way up to this, uh, you know, $7 range. And it was around $2 earlier. And uh, so, you know, it's just it's been in play. There's a lot of volatility around this Toncoin. I basically had the idea that I wanted to hedge the earn position. So on the telegram wallet i had a position there that's earning me ton coin and they pay you out in ton coin um and now while this is all playing out i also have a feeling that ton coin is kind of trading into this sort of resistance area this would have been you know maybe around uh, early may 2024 as it's trading up into these uh, low sixes you know kind of sevens territory so you know telegram saying that they're going to pay out all these users you know and they have a budget of whatever it is 10 million ton or something like that i don't know the exact number so they're paying out all their users um for depositing usdt and you know it's kind of hard to explain this but basically i had the idea that because they're paying out all their users in ton coin it kind of causes a bit of i guess it's called dilution of the coin so what it means for me, what it meant basically is that this Ton coin is all being transferred into the hands of these users um, in the earn program. And because I'm earning Ton coin there, I also wanted to start off by hedging a bit of the downside. So as I was earning the Ton coin there, I decided to go into the crypto market on a centralized exchange. I trade on KuCoin, but you know, you can trade on any exchange you want. This is not sponsored, affiliated in any single way. It's just a trade review video, okay? I just want you guys to understand that clearly. So I went into the, my crypto KuCoin account and I started by selling some Toncoin. So I borrowed some Toncoin and I started by shorting about 100 of it um, just to act as a bit of a hedge. So before I show you that, I just want to show you, you know, all the executions and how they start of uh, look on the chart. I put them on the trading view chart just so you can see this is a 15 minute time frame. This was the first time I put on the hedge. And as you can see, I actually ended up going deeper into the short um, a few days later as I started to you know, have a bit more context around the thesis. And I actually decided that I wanted to take a full on short position on Ton. And um, it ended up working. I covered it here the prior morning, uh, the next morning, I guess, and um, got stopped out of the last bit of my runner position as it uh, rallied up later in the day. And then later in the evening yesterday took a nice little short and these trades well i want to say that these trades were all done on my phone um with you know context of trading view you know also using the trading view mobile app to get my context and uh, the levels you see on the chart are based on my system of how i categorize supply demand zones based on one time framing i don't have any video that goes over how i categorize those but 
I do everything manually on TradingView, but on my Sierra Chart software, I have everything that does it automatically for me. One of my goals is to put in some of these obscure crypto coins onto Sierra Chart so that way I can do my analysis um, in a more automated way, of course. But you know, that's a project for another day, I think. Um, so it started with the hedge trade over here, and we'll go ahead and look at the execution. So uh, the timestamps you're gonna see here are all in uh, US Eastern time. So the first trade that I put on was this. Was the, it was basically a hedge. It was a hedge position that I wanted to go ahead and short 100 ton um, just to kind of hedge myself in the case that we see any considerable depreciation in the value of ton against USDT because I'm earning ton on the Telegram wallet. I want to make sure that the ton I'm earning there you know, is not gonna be like a depreciated ton, right? Because right now ton's trading at $6 and half USDT. And because of this whole earn event, I think that there's potential for dilution. I don't even know if I'm using the term dilution correctly, but it's just something that I felt intuitively about it. And I wanted to protect my downside in the case that the the, the value of the Tom coin would depreciate significantly while I'm earning it on the side. So it's like I'm being paid in an asset that's depreciating consistently. So in a way, I wanted to hedge that to make sure that if it does depreciate, I'm... Uh, I'm making up for that on the short side here. So I started with a short position of 100 ton, which is okay. Shorted them at that price of 665. And then you can also see I did put in a stop order um, up at, you know, above $7 because I don't want to keep my hedge on. If it's going to be going past these areas, I think, you know, it's a, it's a bit dangerous to stay short it. <clears throat> so I did put in a stop order to get rid of that 100 ton short position in the case that we did rally up to 715. So a few days later, um, as the market is continuing to play out, I'm getting more of a feel for the context of the market. I actually decided to go on and put on a full on short position on Ton coins. And what's interesting about this is that I was doing all this on my phone while at a barbecue at a friend's house and, you know, trading view on my phone, KuCoin on my phone. And I just decided to go ahead and borrow some Ton coin and just put on a short position and add to the short position. This four ton that I hear that I sold was actually some of the ton coin that I earned on Telegram wallet that I transferred over to KuCoin and I just uh, sold it in the open market there. On top of that, I borrowed about 600 of it and sold it at a price of 653 and my stop is still at the same price of uh, 715 at this point. So that was on May 20th at 9, 10 p.m. So I'll show, what, I'll show you what that looks like on the chart. So that would have been right here on May 20th. I was watching it later into the evening and into the following morning. And the next day we were trading lower. So I didn't really have any reason to cut the trade off. You know, I'm I'm more of a swing trader and I like to let my trades ride if they're going in my favor, if they're working out. And as I got an, I just got an alert that crude oil is moving down here, which is good because I'm shorted at 78 and a half or something. If it trades in my favor, I think the better move is typically to let it ride. Of course, you know, relative to your management strategy and all that, you know, your money management strategy is important. Like if you're down money or you're flat money after a lot of trades and you have maybe you have to make up for some, potentially sometimes it's a good decision to cover. But in this case, you know, I was comfortable just letting this thing ride to give me more information, you know, let it ride for a couple of days to play out. So the prior day, I mean, so the day after I entered the short, you know, I'm watching it very closely and I'm seeing that the market's not really strong. In fact, it's quite weak. Um, so I let it ride a little bit longer and then I made it a point to get up early enough the next morning um, to make sure that uh, if we would see any considerable moves in the morning, I want to be, you know, potentially making some adjustments to my position on that. Um, and that's exactly what happened. I'm trying to avoid hindsight as much as possible, but at the same time, I'm just explaining to you my thesis behind the trade. So I'm in a full on short position on Toncoin at this point, and now it is Tuesday morning. So I'm recording this now, it's Wednesday or Thursday. I'm recording this at a later, I'm recording this at a later date, but I'm talking about Tuesday morning. Now I got up, you know, relatively early, looked at the market and saw that we had a, a dump, you know, right around 8.30 in the morning. And I believe that there was a news announcement. One thing I was saying to another trader asking me questions about, you know, which markets do I watch and all that is um, something that's important to know is that, you know, the currency markets, as well as crude oil and bonds, they open up pretty early in the morning. So sometimes it's possible you'll see big moves, you know, right around nine in the morning or 830 in the morning Eastern time. 
you know, depending on the context, it's possible that those moves can put in highs and lows. And once they're put in, you know, the market either reverses or it just chops for the rest of the day. Um, so I was aware that that was a potential scenario, you know, so I saw this Tom coin move down early in the morning at 845 and then it recovered off of that. And I was targeting actually right around uh, low sixes. So I had a, a limit buy in at 611 and something. Um, and I'll just switch over to the daily chart just really quickly to kind of explain that to you. I was basically targeting below the low of this bar right here. Um, and I was expecting it to potentially move down into some of these weekly areas, you know, right around sixes or below sixes. Now, the way it moved below the prior day low, um, which would have been at uh, 620.49, that was the low of this particular bar right here. The way it moved down below that and rejected and then just chopped wasn't really great. And now, of course, all through this, I'm watching Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin is interesting. I want to make a note of the fact that part of the reason why I was entering a short position on Ton is because Bitcoin um, traded right into a pretty big resistance level on the daily time frame. Uh, this was at the moment on Monday, May 20th, where Ethereum was up 19.5% and Bitcoin was up 7.8%, trading up to something like uh, I think it was like 40, sorry, I think it was like 71,400. And that was the area I was watching, basically. Um, so I have this, you know, this, I have this idea that Bitcoin's trading right into resistance. On top of that, I'm a bit bearish on Toncoin. Toncoin is displaying characteristics of being slightly weaker and underperforming the general crypto market. So it makes sense that I want to be more short biased on it. So that's part of the narrative as well. Bitcoin trading at the resistance. So the next morning, Bitcoin is selling off a little bit as well. Um, but overall, I wasn't seeing any real considerable signs of weakness. This was what Bitcoin was doing. You know, it was trading a bit lower and I wasn't really seeing any real considerable signs of weakness in Bitcoin itself um, that had the potential to really continue to lead the Toncoin market further lower. Um, and on top of that, we saw that kind of blow off move to the downside, broke below that prior day low on Ton and then rejected and started, you know, bidding up. And again, I was watching the order book and I really was not seeing very many considerable signs of weakness. So I started thinking that I probably needed to start covering this short. Um, unless I was willing to sit through it a lot longer, which I wasn't. So I decided to cover the trade basically. So. I gave it about 15, 20 minutes or so after it bottomed and then reversed. And, and then I just started covering because I saw that it was just fading upwards. That was a decision that I decided to make. And you'll look at some of these covers here. So on the 22nd, you can see I put in an order to cover at 23, 93, 22 and seven, covering pretty much the entirety of the entire position there, about 620 ton. Um, profit on that trade was probably about 200 bucks or so. And then I still had that initial position on of about a hundred ton, um, that I put in a buy stop order to cover in the case that it went back to my break even price of 655, because, you know, at this point I feel like I've made my money on the hedge. So it doesn't really make sense to keep, you know, keep the hedge on if the market continues to rally. I'd rather just take the rest of the hedge off. I made my money, take the money and run and then just wait for the market to give me, you know, more information. Um, I actually made a mistake and I put in a buy of 120. I actually only had 100 that I needed to buy, but I bought 120 by accident. I ended up having to sell that extra 20 later on. So maybe a, just a small three cent loss on that 20 ton which is really not much of a big deal. So that was pretty much the end of that trade. Um, and what was, you know, hindsight is 2020, but um, it turned out it was a good cover because the market did fade up and continue to rally upwards and it got a lot more aggressive later in the day and, and went back up to that daily level of uh, 656 and something. And then it consolidated there for quite a while. So later that night, I was out with a few friends, just enjoying the scenery, drinking a beer. And I look at my phone and I actually received an alert that Toncoin is trading at 670, which is a daily chart level uh, based on my system and all that. There's another one up at 81. So I thought about it for a few minutes while I was just chilling out and I decided to put on another short position 
right around there um, with a risk as high as 681 and something. Um, so basically I was risking about 10, 11 cents to make about 12 cents or so. My target was going to be just before the 656, 657 daily chart level. So I quickly borrowed a thousand ton. I ended up only shorting 500 of it. And I would have shorted a little bit more if it went a little higher. Um, put in a stop order, put in the target order, and now let's go look at those order placements and you'll see exactly what I did. Uh, so right here, you can see there's the timestamp 2232. I did all this on my phone. I was looking at KuCoin on my phone as well as TradingView Mobile on my phone. I borrowed 500, sold it right here. There's that execution from the evening trade that I put on on my phone, sold 500 at a price of 670 and something. And uh, then I just waited it out. At the same time, I put in a few orders. You can see there's my buy stop limit order, which was basically the stop loss at 681.9. I put in an order to bid to cover 250 at 658.69. That order ended up actually getting filled. Um, you're seeing that the order was filled, but the timestamp over here is when the order was actually placed. So you can see this was all done in the time frame of about two minutes. So I, uh, so I put on the order to short the 500. Then I immediately put in my target and my stop. Uh, soon after, I put in an order to buy 250. This order right here was an error in this order, so just ignore that order. I ended up canceling it. Okay, so you can see that the first target was filled, uh, but what's important is to see that that's the time the order was placed. Okay, you can see this is later on around 23.25. This is when the trade ended up following through, and um, I ended up putting in another bid to cover the last uh, bit of it at a price of uh, 658.69, and that was the price. I think I was filled at 59 but I put in a price of 69. I originally had a bid at 58.12, but I saw the way the market moved down there. I'm watching the order book very closely on my mobile phone, and um, I decided that I just wanted to cover the whole thing. And uh, you know, it's a psychological number, so it's trading down to that area, 658. And 69, it's kind of like an inconspicuous number, but it's also a psychological number because you know 69 represents the yin yang, and uh, the sign of cancer, I guess. And it's just, uh, you know, 42069. It's like a sort of psychological number that occurs in, um, in markets quite often. So I'll often try to get filled around those psychological numbers. I try to avoid putting my orders right around big, obvious, even numbers. And I also like to split up my orders when I'm trading crypto because you never know how much liquidity there could be on the order book. I don't want my order to stand out like a sore thumb, although it probably won't. With, it's just good to be a bit inconspicuous with that. Yeah, so that's what this trade looked like right here. Um, and I would have been covering basically probably it was on this bar right here or this bar um, as it traded down under 660. Yeah, so I ended up actually covering this while I was sitting at a bar having a beer. And that was the end of that. It was very interesting. Total profit on these two trades, probably about 250, 260 USDT. Not too bad, not too bad. And uh, we'll continue monitoring Toncoin markets for any additional opportunities. Right now I'm flat. I'm actually short on crude oil um, at 78. Wow. I'm actually short on crude oil at 78.46 from this morning. And this thing is moving down pretty aggressively here. So we're in a good little trade there too. So uh, I'll see you guys later. And I don't know if this is going to go on YouTube. Maybe it will. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Cheers. Thank you very much.